talking about other people. I'm talking about myself. The reason why I still eat meat is because if I don't have enough love for myself to become the better version of myself and stop eating meat and removing bad habits. And the reason what that happens is because I can't accept certain aspects aspect of myself like being unable to help people that I love or not doing the right thing imagine if you did something wrong how can you love yourself or accept yourself ah there reflect cry really hard forgive yourself and uh, start taking action that's that's the best thing that I can tell you if I was doing fucked up stuff like that I would just cry I would just, you know, I would just cry. Cry it all out. And go like, from now on, I won't, I won't. I will do better. And that's it. It's the same process you go through when uh, when someone passes away or whatever. Like you, you, like just as much as you can show redemption for people that, die and, and just see the good part in them you can do it for yourself too actually crying is really a very powerful emotion sadness is the if you would tell me what is the most powerful emotion in the world it's sadness it's the most powerful one true sadness not the one sadness where you don't get five dollars and you cry no no true sadness that comes from cognitive empathy Why should I forgive myself instead of hurting myself? Um, because you deserve it. You deserve to be forgiven. It's because you're worth it. Because of that. Because you're alive. Because life itself is already, you know, forgiving. It's unconditional as well. Are you fucking Christ? <laughs> it's like, I'm doing my best, you know, like, I, I'm doing my best to really give some really good, valid, you know, insights. And when people just zap to the Twitch channel, it's like, are you Jesus Christ, man? Is, is that the channel I'm now on? The Jesus Christ one? It's funny. I just find it funny. Now just question, why do I deserve it? You deserve it just because you're alive. The thing is about love, right? Um... When you're a kid and you grow up, right, you try to get love from your mother and you try to get uh, approval from your father. And um, the most powerful love that you can get is unconditional. It's not having to meet any requirements to, achieve, to get this love. And you might wonder and say like, yeah, but that's not how it works, right? Well, if you have really good upbringing, your mother will love you no matter what. Of course, if your mother has certain expectations as, you know, certain uh, like has grown up with her own uh, set of uh, traumas or whatever, she might project them to you and, 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 and you know, damage you in the process. But as you grow older, you develop the cognitive capacity to reframe what happened in the past and to see that when you're a child, the only thing you deserve is love unconditionally. You don't need to meet any requirements to get love. Just being alive meets the requirement. And, um, and that's why, depending on where you grow up, you'll be just much more self-loving. There's certain cultures where self-love is a non-issue at all. Uh, there's other cultures where self-love or just loving yourself is a big issue. So knowing that there is no requirements to be loved, that it's unconditional and that the only, you know, 
the only uh, requirement is being alive. I mean, without being alive, being loved is a bit strange. Um, allows you to, you know, to, to, to let go of all this, all these expectations and all these requirements that you've grown to internalize because of how you grew up. And um, what it does is it makes you angry at those that have taken that away from you. But then if you use cognitive empathy to put yourself in their shoes, you realize that, you know, they didn't know any better either. And that's when you start forgiving, not even for them per se, but for yourself. Uh, so it's just a process where, that you go through. <clears throat> 